of people in a place that was bounded on three sides by impenetrable forests and on the fourth by the steppe. They were a strong, brave and cheerful people. But evil times came upon them. Other tribes came warring against them and drove them into the depths of the forest. The forest was dark and swampy, for it was very ancient, and the boughs of the trees were so closely interwoven that they shut out the view of the sky, and the sun's rays did all they could to pierce the thick foliage and reach the waters of the swamp. And wherever they reached those waters, poisonous vapours arose, and the people began to get sick and die. They had to get out of the forest, but there were only two ways. One was to go back over the road they'd come, but at the end of it strong and vicious foes awaited them. The other was to push forward through the forest, but there they'd encounter the giant trees, whose mighty branches were closely entwined, and whose gnarled roots were sunk deep into the mire of the bogs. They were a brave people, and they would have fought to the death with those who had once defeated them, had they not feared being wiped out in the fight. They had their forefathers' behests to defend, and if they perished, their behests would perish with them. So they sat, pondering their fate through the long nights, with the poisonous vapours rising around them, and the forest singing its mournful song. And the shadows of the fires leaped about them in a soundless dance, and it seemed as if it weren't mere shadows dancing, but the evil spirits of forest and bog celebrating their triumph.
Alexander Nesterov, a junior research assistant at the Pole 21 Polar Station, is due at coordinates 86 degrees 21 north, 74 degrees 57 east, on the 27th of March 1981, where he will board the nuclear icebreaker North Wind. Going. The cans are in place. No sign yet. Sit down. Warm up while it burns. I've brought two more crates to dry. Sit down. Warm up while it burns.
stairs, quickly! It won't hold much longer! Captain, the rod shows formation of sea ice all along our course. The rod, as in the divining rod? Another clairvoyant gadget of yours. Sir, clairvoyance is for shamans. This is cutting-edge scientific equipment, virtually foolproof. Do you know why it is called the rod? Well, yeah, you had it, sir. Named after a divining rod, a stick used to search for water underground was real popular back in the days of wooden ships and navigating under the stars. Times change, but some things remain much the same. The ship must respect you. You must listen to her, understand her, talk to her, live with her one-on-one -on -one for many years. Then you become more than just a captain. You become a part of something bigger. That's great, but isn't it just pretty words? Sir, it seems to me all you've got to do is hold on to the wheel. When are you going to let me try, by the way? You don't waste any time, do you? Well, if you're keen, try this for now.
Danko was one of them, and he was young and handsome. Handsome people are always courageous. And he said to his comrades, Stones are not to be removed by thinking. He who does naught will come to naught. Why should we exhaust our energies thinking and brooding? Arise! Let us go through the forest until we come out at the other end. After all, it must have an end. Everything has an end. Come, let us set forth. They looked at him and saw that he was the best man among them, for his eyes were aglow with life and strength. Lead us, they said, and he led them. Captain, a difficult stretch ahead. Should we go around? <laughs> a difficult stretch, you say? <laughs> we'll manage. We can't afford to lose a whole day. We might lose a lot more if it's as bad as it looks. My crew has been through a lot worse than that. <laughs> and they can certainly manage that little patch of ice. <laughs> but, sir, isn't it better to avoid difficulties altogether if we can? Are you suggesting I shouldn't have faith in my crew? It's not about trust, sir. It's about common sense. And do you think it makes common sense to navigate the Arctic for 20 years in a row? Can't you see there is real danger up ahead? Are you losing your courage? Have you been testing your rod again? Don't you know it's not the rod, it's the dowser? Ah, uh, just go to your cabin. You'll be safe there. This is insane. Yeah. 
a divining rod. A stick. It doesn't matter what kind, it's immaterial. What matters is you. You just need to tell yourself to find water. Send this thought to the rod, and that's it. It works best when you can wander around fields and forests by yourself, letting your senses take over. But when you're followed by a crowd, finding water can be difficult. For this reason, many expert dowsers search for water secretly, at odd hours, in order to get the privacy they need. Check it out! Where the cables go? Yeah, hold. it's all right. We almost got it up. Come on, just a little more. Wait, the stopper keeps sliding off. This sucks. This one is empty as well. Everything I got out of the others I put into the diving suit. There is enough oxygen for about five minutes. All right, we've got what we've got. Hope it's enough. Go to the elevator. I'm sending it down. out of the elevator. The water is real murky. Turn left immediately and look for me. I'll be in the boat. You were on the upper decks back then, and we're all down here. So we're just sitting here, minding our own business, and then, holy, the water just, wham, came pouring in. sides ripped along the seams like tissue paper. That was one hell of an impact. But 
we dealt with it, thank God. Got some padding, patched up the walls, made some struts, and then you know the rest. First, it got hot. Then it got cold. Now it's weird. All the diving. Hey, what's happening out there? Watch out! There's a lot of junk at the bottom. Together. Yeah, I know, it's murky as hell, I know. Come on, you're almost there! There are some rusty pipes there with some valves on them. I got some circulation going here so it doesn't freeze up. And listen, you watch your step. Don't touch those valves. The pipes won't move. Uh, why am I telling you? You know that already. It's been like that for years. That's done it. The frigging pipes. That's it. Now, if we don't drain them, they'll all be frozen solid by tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, enough with the talking. You're almost there. Get through the gate. Come on. Glory! the side and then make a right. I'll head to the winch. We'll go from there. There should be a piece of wood there. We used it and some padding to plug the hole. I'll lower the support strut and you cut the lines with your blowtorch. Lowering! Cut the lines on both hooks on the sides. Good. Okay, it's in place. I'm turning the engine on now. You watch the stopper. Stage complete. So he led them, Danko, and they followed him willingly, for they believed in him. It was a difficult trek. It was dark, 
and at every step the yawning bog swallowed people up, and the trees were like a mighty wall, barring the way. Their branches were closely interwoven. Their roots were like snakes, reaching out in every direction. And every step these people took cost them blood and sweat. For a long time they went on. And the further they went, the thicker grew the forest. And the weaker grew their limbs. And then they began to murmur against Dunko saying that he was young and inexperienced and had no right to bring them here. But he kept walking at their head, his spirit undaunted, his mind unclouded. It's holding tight. Now, we just gotta turn on the pumps. They're straight ahead in the next section. Last time it wouldn't pump no matter what we did. There's gotta be a blockage somewhere. There's a broken pipe up here where some debris probably fell down. If something is blocking it down there, cut it with your blowtorch. Yeah, hell yeah, we got pressure, finally.
attention! All personnel to the lower decks! Down! Down! Move it! Move it quickly! Move it or we'll sink! We need to drain the water into the compartment! Open the door and I'll turn on the pump! Open it! over the forest, and the trees whispered together menacingly, and instantly it became as dark as if here were gathered all the nights that had passed since the forest was born. And the little people walked on under the big trees amid the roar of the storm, and as they walked, the giant trees creaked sang a sinister song, and the lightning flashed above the treetops, throwing a cold blue light over the forest for a brief instant, disappearing as quickly as it had appeared, and striking terror into the hearts of the people.
We had met before. I could always feel it approaching and would know exactly when it would happen. The entire crew would go up top and wait. At first, we wouldn't see it, but could hear its retinue approach. And then, just when we had waited so long that we thought it wasn't coming, it would make its entrance. It would appear suddenly, majestically, emerging out of the mist, rising to the applause of the angry waves, dropping shards of its emerald mantle. It would slide alongside us. Even when passing at a respectful distance, the entire space between us would seem to be frozen solid, and every one of us would yearn to breathe in the air of this ancient glacier. Just then, the entire ship would be deadly calm. The crew would stay perfectly still and watch the giant disappear. And then, the spell broken, everyone would return to their routine, loud and happy as ever. But I would stay on the bridge, silently thanking it for letting us pass. The nuclear icebreaker Northwind hit an iceberg at 2.16 a.m. on the 24th of March, 1968. The vessel's bow and starboard suffered heavy damage, which resulted in partial flooding of the third deck and damage to the stern starboard crane. There were no casualties, and the ship is currently still afloat. Repairs are underway, but may take up to a week. So what happened? We came across that iceberg three hours earlier than I expected. How did that happen? How could I screw up so badly? Was it one of those moments when nature teaches you a painful lesson, and you realize that even the most experienced dowser can get it wrong?
To HQ, urgent. Considering the emergency, I feel that it is my duty, as an officer, to report that the wreck was a result of negligence and culpable inefficiency by the ship's captain. Breach of duty in the shape of ignoring ample warning from the collision warning equipment rod was the direct cause of the accident. My repeated appeals to the captain to deal with the threat were ignored. I further wish to inform you that the fact that the accident was not catastrophic was purely due to a set of lucky circumstances, especially considering the age and poor condition of the ship. I await further instructions. Berserk! Get his rifle before he kills us all! Thank <laughs> you. 
Comrade officer? What is it? You have a reply from HQ. Really? That was fast. Will you inform the captain? Yes, of course. On your way to the captain then? Yes, we just received this. A reply from HQ. Take it easy. The time is not right. We'll get to it, understand? If you have anything else, the captain is in the cargo bay. I see. I was heading there anyway.
don't even think of going up. I'm warning you! Stop! Get down! I'm asking you! I make no promises! Even think of going up. I'm warning you. Stop. Get down. I'm asking you. I make no promises. Get down, I said. Get down. There you go! Down these steps! Quietly! of the lightning, the trees seemed to be live things that were stretching out long gnarled arms and weaving them into a net to catch these people who were trying to escape from darkness. And something cold and dark and fearsome peered at them through the dark foliage. It was a difficult trek, and the people who had set out on it grew exhausted and lost heart. But they were ashamed to admit their weakness, and so they poured out their anger and resentment on Danko, who was walking at their head. They began to accuse him of being incapable of leading them.
Sir, I'm preparing a detailed report on the repairs. Would you say a week to get it all done? Go to the lower decks and you can see for yourself. They will explain to you that the repair time depends very much on the abilities of our crew members. As well as the abilities of the captain to perform his duties. Like getting the ship to its destination while keeping the cargo and crew safe. So, why don't you get to it, sir? Because the recent chain of events, how do I say it, cast a shadow over your competence. Now listen here. Let me explain something to you. I am in command of this vessel until either I or my ship ceases to exist. This is not your ship, sir. You are a member of its large crew, tasked with a certain role, and in regards to its future, that might be decided sooner than you think. Are you threatening me? Here's a message from HQ, for a start.
to the cabin and send up the crane. Let's try it again! It's good to have you back in time. I have prepared everything, but you need to double-check it. Hurry up! The captain is on his way here with another problem. <laughs> Unsolvable again. He runs to me, and I console him. Well, like a child, really. <laughs> it must be his age. Now, back to our business, <laughs> which is at least solvable. Head to the platform. I've taken care of the rods. More instructions will follow once you get there.
Read this. You know, I'm very glad. No, really. What did you expect? You had a pain in the neck. Both of you, yes, you and your sorry excuse for a ship. I'm so tired. Look, you're a big boy now. You can't play around forever. And I can't help you this time. Now go, please. Go. Oh, quit trying. Everyone has had it with you. No one wants you here. So there. He's been asking for it anyway. Just can't take it anymore.
We might lose a lot more if it's as bad as it looks. Bad for whom? For the crew? For every member seems to think that navigating the North Pole is like a trip to the shops? In this place, the wind howls like a pack of wild beasts bellowing, go forth and behold. The beast leads you into the frozen hell. In you go, eyes wide open while the cold spreads down your throat and into your gut, where it forms a ball of ice. This is the North Pole's welcome. No marching band, no flags, no speeches. Instead, it shatters all your illusions and suddenly, all the routine comforts of Mother Earth seem alien, half forgotten, like something in a dream. Only if this has happened to you, can you truly understand the North Pole. And it will stay with you forever. For the third time, Averkin. Here. Barbukin. Here. Dobrovolsky. Right here. Erashev. Erashev. Zobachev. Yeah. Kayekti. He's not here. Levey. Levey. Mazira. Dead. Novrotsky. Nureyev. He's missing. Tataurov. Tatourov! Here, he's right here. Hundakov! Uryasov! Feriulin! Kakimov! Undakov and Kakimov stayed in the engine room. Navrotsky was working downstairs. Where are they now? Not here. Shiverov! Shoutanov! Eliashev! Here! Is that everyone? No! Eliashev! Yurigin! Yadugin! Here's what we have. HQ is aware of our situation and is launching a rescue mission. We'll stay in contact as long as the radio is operational. Secondly, the valves are welded all around. The second line will take a long time to cool down, so we'll be warm for a while. Now, regarding food...
turbine! Put the extinguishers on manual! An oil fire down there already. Can't put it out with water. <coughs> we need to turn on the inhibitor, but it's leaking. You know why? We need a valve adapter like this one, except in one piece. <coughs> I think we can make one though, quickly. Go look for metal bars there, in the corner. Finish it myself. To the captain of nuclear icebreaker Northwind, upon cargo delivery proceed to destination for temporary docking. Your ship will be subsequently decommissioned. Prepare all necessary paperwork.
Sick bay. The sick bay. The sick bay is overcrowded. To the hallway, then along the walls, quickly. What expectorants do we have? All right, get me some ampicillin and EDTA. How much? Whatever we've got, we might just need all of it. Doctor, look! Rinse the eyes, mouth and nose with water. Remove his clothes. Pump his stomach before he hemorrhages. Oh. For nausea, air on one pill two to three times. If it persists, administer one milliliter of one atropine solution intramuscularly. If you cannot stop vomiting, use 50 milliliters of 10% sodium chloride intravenously. Don't give them anything to eat or drink. Neocompensant, polyglucinin, everything we've got, intravenously, up to 400 milliliters every 24 hours. Now move it, we're running out of time. Doctor, he collapsed. Four milliliters of cordiamine and one milliliter of 1% meseton solution under the skin now. Then rig up a catheter with four milliliters of one noradrenaline solution per 200 milliliters of saline solution. Doctor, will you look at this one? Look at what? I can see it already. They are to the bone, almost glowing. Go check the pulse. I don't know. Just makes no sense.
day well spent. <laughs> Think you are going to freedom? Are you indeed of those who have the right to cast off the yoke? There are many a slave who has lost all their value after becoming free. wailing over the bodies of those who had died of the poisonous vapors, or lamenting over the fate of the living made helpless by fear. And cowardly words came to be spoken in the forest, at first softly and timidly, but louder and louder as time went on. And at last, the people thought of going to the enemy and making him a gift of their freedom. So frightened were they by the thought of death that not one of them shrank from living the life of a slave.
battery! Can I get some light up in the hall? It's dark as hell!
Armstrong. Aren't you happy with your freedom? Or is something wrong with it? Want to get back to your plates already? Lingo, you'll get your meal on time.
they came to a halt, and, tired and angry, they began to upbraid him there in the quivering darkness, amid the triumphant roar of the storm. You are a despicable and evil creature who has brought us to grief, they said. You have exhausted us by leading us here, and for that you shall die. You said lead us, and I led you, cried out Danko, turning to face them. I have the courage to lead you, and that is why I undertook to do so. But you? What have you done to help yourselves? You have done nothing but follow me, without husbanding your strength for a longer march. You merely followed me like a flock of sheep. His words only infuriated them the more.
Ah. Uh -huh.
You shall die. You shall die, they shrieked. The forest roared and echoed their cries, and the lightning tore the darkness to shreds. Danko gazed upon those for whose sake he had undertaken such great labor, and he saw that they were like wild beasts. Many people were pressing about him, but he could detect no signs of humanity in their faces, and he knew that he could expect no mercy from them. Then resentment seethed in his breast, but it was quelled by compassion. He loved these people, and he feared that without him they would perish.
It's been two weeks, and the ship is dead in the water. Why won't this iceberg let us go? These thoughts have haunted me during the long nights as I listen to the mournful sounds of the glacier. Nothing exhausts the mind quite so much as dark thoughts. And so I was exhausted, but I finally understood. We had all stayed in our cabins. No one came out to greet it. We were all convinced we were going to get through. We disrespected it. We had no fear. And so the thin layer of our human knowledge cracked under the weight of nature.
The iceberg isn't holding the ship. We became a part of it on our own. It let us in and now we're living and breathing it and becoming all the time further entombed. We have become indifferent and brittle. It crippled us, brought us to our knees. Fear grips us tightly and we willingly offer ourselves to it. We are still alive for now but we will be in the power of the glacier forever.
The shielding initiated. Can't we stop it? Do something! Calm down. There's no need to rush anymore. It'll start soon. How much longer? Don't know. This is an automated process. We need to get out of here. And go where? What about the crew? The crew will manage. Get the helicopter ready. Without the captain's permission, I can't do that. I'll sir. help you. We'll all do it together. I'll meet you up top in ten minutes. And it sent up a shower of sparks and went out. Once, during another endless stop, I was woken by a loud noise. I jumped up and went on deck, and when my eyes had adjusted to the light and I could differentiate between the skies and marble white ice, I saw streaks of red stretching as far as the horizon. Looking down, I saw the body of a huge polar bear lying on the bloody shreds as small grey people bustled about screaming gesturing, interrupting, and congratulating each other on finally taking down the beast. Stuck in the narrow space between two low hills, for the first time in its life, the bear had to confront not nature, but nature's highest creation.
Suddenly, this made me look at myself, and I saw that I was no better than them. How could I hope to change the world if I didn't start with myself? If I had to change at least one man, let it be me. Now I understand the situation even better. I feel the bear's anguish in my bones. The iceberg tightens its vice and there's nowhere to run. To fight or to give up. This is it, the most basic and the hardest choice in life. This is how we learn. This is the test. There is no time to waste. We will break free if it lets us. Lord, don't leave me now. Destroy the Do ship. not forget my cargo. Captain, open the door. Captain, sir, open the door. What's wrong with you? Ahead, Frank. Where's the radio message? Did you give that message to him? Isn't this 
just what you wanted? Grab the wheel! The ship is yours! It's not turning! The control lever is stuck! I can't move it! Help me! The telegraph is stuck! Engine room full astern! We go in 20 knots! It's not safe! Come on! Back! Emergency! Or I'll have you court-martialed! Pull the stern! Can't we stop it? Do something! Calm down. There's no need to rush anymore. It'll start soon. How much longer? Don't know. This is an automated process. We need to get out of here. And go where? What about the crew? The crew will manage. Get the helicopter ready. Without the captain's permission, I can't do that, sir. I'll help you. We'll all do it together. I'll meet you on top in ten minutes. Cast thy bread upon the waters, for thou shalt find it after many days. Wait, he's saying something. <clears throat> no, I can't hear anything. Uh, uh. And the flames of a great yearning to save them and lead them out onto an easy path leaped up in his heart. And these mighty flames were reflected in his eyes. And seeing this, the people thought he was enraged. They thought that was why his eyes flashed so. And they instantly grew wary, like wolves, expecting him to throw himself against them and they drew closer about him that they might seize him and kill him. He saw what they were thinking, but the flames in his heart only flared up higher, for their thoughts added the sorrow to the flames of his yearning. Remember also thy Creator in the days of thy youth, before the evil days come, and the years draw nigh, when thou shalt say, I have no pleasure in them. Two, before the sun and the light and the moon and the stars are darkened and the clouds return after the rain. In the day when the keepers of the house shall tremble, and the strong men shall bow down, and the grinders cease because they are few, and those who look out of the windows shall be darkened, and the doors shall be shut in the street when the sound of the grinding is low, and one shall rise to the song of a bird, and all the daughters of music shall be brought low. Yea, they shall be afraid of that which is high, and terror shall be in the way. And the almond tree shall blossom, and the grasshopper shall be a burden, and desire shall fail. Because man goeth to his everlasting home, and the mourners go about the streets. The silver cord is loosed, or the golden bowl is broken, or the pitcher is broken at the fountain, or the wheel broken at the cistern, and the dust returneth to the earth as it was, and the spirit returneth unto God who gave it.
about me? Oh, oh, did you forget about me? Oh, don't leave me! Don't leave! went on singing its mournful song, and the thunder crashed, and the rain poured down. What else can I do to save these people? cried out Danko above the thunder. And suddenly he ripped open his breast and tore out his heart and held it high above his head. It shone like the sun, even brighter than the sun, and the raging forest was subdued and lighted up by this torch, the torch of a great love for the people. And the darkness retreated before it and plunged, quivering, into a yawning bog in the depths of the forest. And in their astonishment, the people were as if turned to stone. The brave Danko cast his eye over the endless steppe cast a joyful eye over this land of freedom and gave a proud laugh and then he fell down and died. And his followers were so full of joy and hope that they did not notice he had died and that his brave heart was still flaming beside his dead body. But one timid creature noticed it and fearing he knew not what stamped on the flaming heart and it sent up a shower of sparks and went out.
shall control them, deceive them, and you shall gain much, otherwise they will devour you. Sir, I'm preparing a detailed report on the repairs. Would you say a week to get it all done? Go to the lower decks and you can see for yourself. They will explain to you that the repair time depends very much on the abilities of our crew members. As well as the abilities of the captain to perform his duties. Like getting the ship to its destination while keeping the cargo and crew safe. So, why don't you get to it, sir? Because the recent chain of events, how do I say it, cast a shadow over your competence. Now listen here. Let me explain something to you. I am in command of this vessel until either I or my ship ceases to exist. This is not your ship, sir. You are a member of its large crew tasked with a certain role, and in regards to its future, that might be decided sooner than you think. Are you threatening me? Here's a message from HQ for a start. Sir, I'm preparing a detailed report on the repairs. Would you say a week to get it all done? Go to the lower decks and you can see for yourself. They will explain to you that the repair time depends very much on the abilities of our crew members. finally decided to grace our presence. What an honor. Would you be so kind as to help us? We're unworthy, of course, but we're so lonely. There, take the thing. It's not scientific, you know, but at least it works. against you. Protect yourself or they will eat you. Sin, sir! Open the door! What's wrong with you? The head flag! Where's the radio message? Did you give that message to him? Isn't this what you wanted? Grab the wheel! The ship is yours! It's not turning! The control lever is stuck! I can't move it! Help me! The telegraph is stuck! Engine room full astern! We go at 20 knots! It's not safe! Come on! Back! Emergency or I'll have you court-martialed! Full astern!
What's the matter? Isn't this what you wanted? Grab the wheel! The ship is your... It's not turning! The control lever is stuck! I can't move it! For if one falls, another will lift up his fellow. But woe to him that is alone when he falleth, and hath not another to lift him up. Hold on, Captain. I will beg HQ on my knees for this ship. Just you hang on. We are getting out. Out! Open water! We've made it! We're underway! Get you sooner or later. Read this. You know, I'm very glad. No, really. What did you expect? You had a pain in the neck. Both of you, yes, you and your sorry excuse for a ship. I'm so tired. Look, you're a big boy now. You can't play around forever. And I can't help you this time. Now go, please, go. Quit trying. Everyone has had it with you. No one wants you here. So there. He's been asking for it anyway. Read this. You know, I'm very glad. No, really. What did you expect? I was making it in my spare time, as if I felt something. Now it came in handy. Here, take it. We'll send it to HQ. Let them disassemble it. Oh. 
I'm the captain of the North Wind Nuclear Icebreaker. Welcome. You are lucky. The ice is rather thin here. You could have easily gone under. Well, now, no time to lose. Let's head for the ship. We have some rough times ahead. And let us send your wonderful dogs back. Unlike us, they always find their way home. Follow me, cried Danko, and he rushed forward, holding his flaming heart high above his head to light the way. And the people followed him, as if under a spell. And once more the forest began to murmur and wave its treetops in wonder. But its murmur was drowned out by the sound of running feet. The people were running ahead boldly and swiftly, lured on by the wonderful vision of the flaming heart. And even now there were those who perished, but they perished without tears and complaints. And Danko went on ahead of them, his heart flaming brighter and brighter. Только и спели, пар. 